From time to time, personal disagreements between recording artists have spilled out into the music. The hip-hop scene is littered with examples of these on-record feuds. But decades before Tupac and Biggie, two of the biggest artists in Jamaican music, Prince Buster and Derek Morgan, had a musical war that became so heated the government had to intervene. This became the first of many on-record battles that became known as the Scar Wars. Following his move from Prince Buster's studio and label to Kong's a few doors down Orange Street, Derek Morgan recorded the song Forward March. Released in 1962, the year that Jamaica gained independence from Britain, ending 300 years of colonial control of the island. Jamaica was the happiest island in all the Caribbean. Kingston was in holiday mood and the whole population hung out the flags and metaphorically threw its hat in the air. Jamaica stood on the threshold of independence. And then it rained. The song's lyrics mark the historic occasion. Gather together, be brothers and sisters, we're independent. Numerous artists released songs inspired by Jamaican independence, but Derek Morgan's was one of the most popular. While most people loved the song, back at 127 Orange Street, Prince Buster was not happy, as Derek Morgan explains. The war within Buster and I, which was a musical war, it started in 62 when I made this song called Forward March. He claimed that the solo, he said that it was a copy of Lester Sterling's solo on his song and one of Prince's own song, which is not true anyhow. Prince Buster believed that this sax part from Derek Morgan's Forward March <laughs> was a copy of this sax solo. Rather than walk from 127 to 135 Orange Street and confront Derek Morgan and his producer Leslie Kong face to face, Prince Buster decided to put his grievances into song. Derek Morgan found out about the planned musical attack even before the song was finished. The fellow came to me and said, why he was at the studio with Prince and hear Prince making a song of me. So what the song is like, he said, name Blackhead China Man. You don't stole my belongings and give to your Chinese man. How rude! Took his belongings to the China man. And, you know, I just sit there and I, I wrote this song called Blazing Fire. And, and I decided, tell Les, I said, let's record this song because I heard that Prince coming out with one. Morgan's response was simply to say, you said it, I'm a blackhead Chinese, and even delivers a message in Chinese for Prince Buster on the intro to the song. Ni tang mu zan. You said it, so are blazing fire. Leza Khan gave me that one, you know, he said, he ni tang mu he said, mean, listen, you fool. Prince Buster responded to Blazing Fire with his song, Praise With No Raise, in which he claims that while everyone is praising the songs that Morgan made with Kong, the Chinese Jamaican producer was the one keeping all the money. Chinese man, banking the race. 
Watch out, blockhead. You're getting praise without praise. Morgan hit back with no raise, no praise, stating that he didn't get either one for his recordings with Buster. It's after he did one, you get in praise and no raise. And so while I was with you, I never get praise, much less raise. I was singing for you. And I neither get praise, much less raise. In 1963, both Prince Buster and Derek Morgan travelled to England to record with Melodist Records. At this time, although he'd been recording with Leslie Kong, Derek Morgan was still under contract to Prince Buster, so he needed to resort to extreme measures to get out of it. We came to UK in 63 and I only spent six months. I do one recording for Melodist Records, it was called Telephone, and Buster did wash wash when I came back went back to Jamaica Prince was there come back with me and he decided to release he only released his son and that was wash wash but I had a little problem with Buster because when I went to England I went upon a contract with Buster after I was with Leslie Kong at the time which was Beverly's and when I come back I want to sing back with Beverly's and giving me a hard time because of the contract. And Leslie Kang didn't want to touch me because I'm under that contract. So I went to him, this finance minister was Eddie Siago at the time before he'd become prime minister. And he called up Charlotte and tell him I must, he must release me of that contract. And that's how I get back to Leslie. Possibly due to being unhappy at being forced to tear up his contract with Derek Morgan, Prince Buster released 30 pieces of silver, labelling his foe Judas. 30 pieces of silver, Judas Chavez is her name. By now, the feud had been going on for a few years and wasn't always confined to the records. Sometimes, rival supporters of the two artists would fight when the songs played on the sound systems. Eventually, the Prime Minister, Hugh Shearer, stepped in and forced the two artists to appear together publicly and shake hands. This seemed to take some of the heat out of the battle, if not quite a total ceasefire. Derek Morgan released Tougher Than Tough in the new slower Rocksteady style, stating that Rudy's don't fear, seemingly an indication he'd moved on. Strong like lion, we are iron. Rudy's don't fear, no boys. Prince Buster made reference to this line in his track, Judge Dredd, where he sentenced the Rudies to 400 years. My name is Judge Dredd, and I don't care. Now take 400 years. Aside from a few passing references, the battle ended there. Both artists began to gain popularity outside of Jamaica and focused their attentions on those markets, rather than their personal battle. Some people have even speculated that the whole thing was invented just to sell records. Either way, they would not be the last Jamaican artist to fight it out on record. Now what do you think? Was this a real war or a publicity stunt? And who do you think won? Let me know in the comments and be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications to get all the latest videos when they drop.